grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Well, welcome everyone to our service, both those who are physically here and those who are virtually here. It is a joy to welcome you as we come to worship together and to bring our prayer and our praise to God. We pray that the technology will all work. Um, if anybody is struggling at home, fear not, because it is also recorded on the little SD card in the camera, um, and then I can do some post-processing, hopefully um, improve the quality um, if everything doesn't quite work. As I was saying this morning, it makes it all a little bit more complicated in setting everything up these days as we try and do things in different ways, just to bring us all together in these difficult and troubled times that remain so. And so we continue to pray, of course, for an end to the pandemic and a return to something that resembles our normal life again. But in the meantime, it is still always a joy to be united in the love and the power of Christ, wherever we may be and however we are here, as we worship God together. But to do that well, we always need to seek his help. So let us pray together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your own name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus said, Before you offer your gift, go and be reconciled. So as brothers and sisters in God's family, we come together to ask our Father for forgiveness. So we say together, God, our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sins, for turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Father, forgive us for behaving just as we wish without thinking of you. Father, forgive us for failing you in what we do and think and say. Father, forgive us for letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world about us. Father, forgive us for living as if we were ashamed to belong to your Son. Father, forgive us. The God of love will bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins, and assure us of his eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And I invite you to stand if you are able. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Father, by the obedience of Jesus, you brought salvation to our wayward world, to us into harmony with your will, that we may find all things restored in him, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please do be seated for our first reading. Excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for anyone. 
So we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. I do not say this as a command, but I am testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this matter I am giving my advice. It is appropriate for you who began last year not only to do something, but even to desire to do something. Now finish doing it, so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it according to your means. For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one does, not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of a fair balance between your present abundance and their need, so that their abundance may be, may be for your need in order that there may be a fair balance. As it is written, the one who had much did not have too much, and the one who had little did not have too little. This is the word of the Lord. To give us time to just reflect on that reading, the generosity of God and our call to be generous within the means that we have.
to stand, if you are able, for our gospel. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the lake. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Giles came, and when he saw him, fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, so that she may be made well and live. So he went with him, and a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for twelve years. She had endured much under many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, If I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately, her hemorrhage stopped, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you? How can you say, Who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But, overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him, except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him, and he went to where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha Kuru, which means little girl, Get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was twelve years of age. At this they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please do be seated. And may I speak in the name of God, who is creator, redeemer, and sustainer. And may our hearts and minds be transformed by our encounter, the living, risen Lord Jesus. Amen. Well, Mark is at his literary best once more. 
One of the things that you might know about Mark's Gospel is he loves sandwiches. Um, the proper name, he, he likes intercalated stories, but sandwiches, I think, uh, works better if we understand that. So we have um, the bread and the story of Jairus, and then the complete story um, in the middle of that, of the healing of the unnamed woman. And it's a wonderful pair of stories of healings, because there are great similarities between them, and yet some differences that I think help us to think about what this means and what Jesus perhaps is saying to us in what he does. So first of all, you have Jairus, a leader of the synagogue, coming to Jesus and begging him for help. It's a reminder to us that not all of the um, leaders in um, the Jewish society at that time had a problem with Jesus. Many did indeed respect him. They have a tendency to sort of lump all of them together as, you know, all of the leaders were the bad lot and everybody else was all right. But actually many of the leaders, you might remember Nicodemus coming to him in secret, um, had great faith in him as well. And so Jairus comes to him, but here we have a Jairus who is desperate. His daughter is dying, he does not know what to do, and he goes in faith to Jesus, knowing what Jesus is capable of, what Jesus has done already, comes to him in that faith and says, come, I know you can heal my daughter. And there's an urgency to it, isn't there? There's an urgency. His daughter is on the point of death. Jairus has rushed to him. Come now. And so Jesus, immediately recognising that deep need, goes with Jairus. And of course, the people love to see the miracles that Jesus performs. So a great crowd follows to see what's going to happen next. You know, this was um, the theatre of the day. They wanted to see what would happen. Jesus has done so many great things. What is coming next? And so this great crowd is jostling and pressing around him as he walks to Jairus' house. And this woman, who has been suffering from these hemorrhages, we don't know the exact nature of the disease, but she's been bleeding for 12 years. So it's likely that with blood, she was ritually unclean as well. And that being the case, not only is she suffering in terms of her health, but she is suffering socially. She is right on the margins of society. No one would go near her. No one would want to touch her. She is an outcast. But she knows what Jesus can do as well. And she doesn't even think that she needs to touch him. Just his clothes will be enough what faith she has. And there is a boldness to her at this point. You know, she's willing to make her way through the crowd just to reach Jesus, just to be able to touch his clothes. And in faith he knows that that will be enough to bring about her healing. And so she does it. And don't forget that this really is a bold move. Here is a woman who is an outcast, who is actually bold enough to make a way through the crowd, even knowing that if anybody recognised that they'd know she was probably unclean, and would shy away. But she goes, and she touches Jesus' cloak, and she feels it within herself. She knows the power of Jesus working in her, and she is healed. Her faith has made her well, as Jesus is about to tell her. But Jesus stops. Can you imagine what Jairus might be feeling at this point? His daughter's on the point of death. There's an urgency, and Jesus stops and says, Who touched me? And this great crowd is all around, and you, you know, the disciples, in their usual way, go, What on earth are you talking about? Everybody's touching you and jostling you. There's a great big crowd around. Why are you asking who touched you? But Jesus knows someone has done this deliberately. That someone has done this because they know his power. They need it. They need him in their lives for their healing. Jesus has felt the power go out of him. He knows something has happened. But it's interesting, here is a human side to Jesus too, because he doesn't yet know what has happened. Who touched me? And the word that's used in the, in the Greek, actually, is he looks around. Is Jesus is, is one of Jesus' glares. 
This isn't the nice, sweet Jesus. This is the somebody has done something. They haven't asked, they've just come and done it. And so he's looking around and glaring. Who touched me? Might feel a bit like that in COVID times at the moment. That slight nervousness that's around. It's like, who touched me? So there's that glare. And so suddenly from that boldness that this woman had, she now comes in fear and trembling. She knows what she has done. She hasn't asked for healing, she's just taken it. And so she comes with fear and trembling before Jesus and she tells him her story. Can you imagine what Jairus is feeling at the moment? Jesus has stopped and now he's talking to this woman. And not any woman. It turns out that this was a richly unclean woman. I don't know what the rest of the crowd might be doing, but suddenly to realise that this woman who is richly unclean has been jostling through and has touched them. And yet Jesus listens to her story and recognises her faith and tells her that absolutely your faith has made you well. Because you have come and you have also then been honest and said what your need is and you have spoken to me. She could have just said, there are so many people around, no one would ever know. I could just go away with my healing and it would be fine. But no, she comes and she tells Jesus. So even in her fear and trembling, perhaps, there is still a sense of that courage as well. And so she is here. But then we go back to Jairus. That story is completed and we're back to Jairus. In the second half of our um, sandwich. And people come to him and say, the daughter's dead. It's too late. The pause that we've just had while Jesus talks to this woman, we don't know how long it took, but it's long enough for the poor girl to have died. And Jesus overhears and say, you know, don't bother the teacher, she's dead, there's nothing that can be done now. And she said, no, still coming. Then he encounters what would have been typical, arriving at the house. And we sometimes forget that culturally, what would happen is actually there would be professional mourners. So it wouldn't just be the family, but others would come from around and they would wail and weep to express the lamentation of the death of the girl. And this would be such a deep lamentation. Notice that the woman with the hemorrhage has been suffering for 12 years. And here we have a 12-year-old girl who is just at the point of puberty. And that point when they'd be thinking about where she might marry, that would be culturally the norm, is actually as a young teenager, they would be married. And so it's not only the loss of the daughter, but it's the loss of that future and that hope and of the generations to come through her. So there is a deep grief and a deep wailing and mourning. But Jesus says, oh, no, don't worry, you can stop crying now. She's only sleeping. Of course, they know the truth. She's dead. There is no doubt about it. But of course, they're professional mourners, so the grief that they're feeling you know, isn't really that strong, shall we say. And so they laugh. Suddenly, the wailing is turned to laughing. They are laughing at Jesus for his diagnosis when he hasn't even seen the girl. The reason that they're standing out there wailing and crying is because she is dead. And they know she is dead, and there is no doubt about it. So Jesus says, go, go away. You don't need to be here. He sends them away because partly they don't really care. And partly because they are no longer going to be needed because Jesus knows what he is going to do. So he sends them away. We have no need of professional warnings, thank you very much. And he takes just his most trusted disciples with him. And he goes up to the room. And he raises the girl from the dead. And she is restored. And again, there's that wonderful thing. Give her something to eat. This is a true bodily resurrection. A precursor, of course, of what happened with Jesus himself when he was raised from the dead. Bodily resurrection. Of course, we too share food. 
And so the whole hopes of the family are restored. It's not just the healing of the girl, but all their hopes and dreams are also restored. But Jesus is ultimately making no distinction between the great and the good, and the lowly and the outcasts. Here we have two healings. One where we have Jairus' daughter. Jairus is named, he's an important person. And Jesus is there for him. But Jesus is as much there for the woman who is on the margins and the outcasts. Even though she isn't given a name here, she is just as important. Are we the same? Can we be the same? It's very easy for those that we know, those who we recognize in positions of authority and who are in the in crowd, so to speak, to work with them and serve them. That's the easy part. But can we also reach out to those in the margins? Those whom we might struggle sometimes to touch. Those who we find harder to be around. Can we be like Jesus and actually offer them a space to be with us? And to find the healing that comes through Christ alone. And that's not always just a physical healing. But actually to know Christ in our lives is to find a new sort of inner peace, a way of dealing with whatever life may send our way. Those of us who know Jesus in our lives know that sensation, know what it is to be able to cope with the fears, the storms, and everything that life may throw at us. It's not that suddenly everything becomes better, but somehow because we know we're not alone, because we know that Jesus walks alongside us and carries us when we need it, that we can weather those storms in ways that we couldn't without them. And if that's true for us, how much more is that true for those that do not yet know Jesus, and those who might find themselves on the periphery of our society? So yes, we have a hard task sometimes, to welcome in those that we may struggle with, to welcome in those who we do not know so well, who might not seem our sort. But the church should be a place that can welcome in everyone, safely and secure, with love. So yes, we have a contrasting healing. Those who are in authority and those on the margins. And we are to welcome all in and offer the healing of Jesus Christ to them for their lives. Can we do that? Well, we can but try. I know we're not Jesus. And I know we are human and will struggle sometimes. But let us try to welcome everyone and to share the love of Jesus, one with another and with everyone, so that all may know the power of Christ in their lives. you to stand if you are able as we declare together our faith in life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please do be seated as we come to our Lord in prayer. God, we are gathered together in love and fellowship 
Hear us now as we bring before you our cares and our needs. We pray for your church throughout the world, for Christians everywhere, meeting in small house groups, in rural and town churches, and in great city cathedrals. Grant that we and all your people may be built up in our faith and show in our lives the love we see in Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we give you thanks for our church here in Rappi and for our diocese. We pray for all who minister and preach and who enlarge and enrich our understanding of God and help us to respond to his love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, we pray for Christians working in places of power and influence who make decisions which affect the lives of so many people. We ask you to bless those who work in politics, in the media, in advertising, in financial markets. May they all know what to say and how to act for the benefit of all people, and at all times to be true and faithful to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for those whom we love, family and friends, those who are the special people in our lives, wherever they may be. We pray for their hopes, their fears, their problems and their needs. But most of all, we thank you for each one of them and for what they give and mean to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, today's Gospel shows the tremendous faith of a sick woman. Help us to learn from this that we should always pray and not give up, and that if we ask, it will be given to us. We raise before you now all those who need to touch the hem of Jesus' garments and receive health and healing in their lives, especially those affected in any way by coronavirus. We also commit into your caring hands those who have died, and we pray for all those who are mourning the loss of a loved one. Lord, in mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we have laid before you our concerns, and now we offer you our thanks and praise for all the blessings and gifts you lavish on us. In the weeks ahead, help us to keep the faith as deeply and passionately as Jairus and the woman of the lake. And we say together, merciful Father, accept these prayers. For the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand if you are able. In the tender mercy of our God, the day spring from on high shall break upon us to give light to those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Now do offer one another a sign of peace, physically with those that you are physically with, and, and socially distanced um, otherwise. <laughs> Please then do be seated as I prepare the floor.
the Lord is here. The Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, right to give him thanks and praise. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. From the beginning you have created all things, and all your works echo the silent music of your praise. In the fullness of time you made us in your image, the crown of all creation. You give us breath and speech, that with angels and archangels and all the powers of heaven we may find a voice to sing your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. How wonderful the work of your hands, O Lord. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embrace the people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From them, you raised up Jesus, our Saviour, born of men, to be the living bread in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sin, and with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross. The night before he died, he came to supper with his friends, and taking bread, he gave his hand. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Father, we plead with confidence. His sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory. And we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May they be for us the God and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. Bring us at the last with all the saints to the vision of that eternal splendour for which you have created us through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, with whom, and in whom with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not to be temptation, but deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever.
break this bread, we share in the body of Christ. Amen. 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 body of our Lord Jesus Christ who died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith. We will thanks be you. And all are welcome at the Lord's table. We are still receiving in one hand only at the moment. Of course, we know that that is full communion. Um, and please, anyone baptized is very welcome at the Lord's table. And I'm grateful for you just prefer to come up and receive the blessing. And it's always my blessing. and healer of the broken. You have fed us at the table of life and hope. Teach us the ways of gentleness and peace, that all the world may acknowledge the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Just a few notices, just a reminder um, of all our services, both online um, and uh, live streamed. Um, but importantly, next one. Um, we have our confirmation service um, here, um, and we have candidates from across the deanery, um, but please do pray especially um, for Rebecca um, Garrett, um, and for um, Bruce Scott, and for Linda Jones, who will be received into the Church of England, and um, from our benefits, um, as well as those from um, St. Crispin's from Gormston, um, and um, from St. Peter's in Renfield, and um, all saints in Newtown and Newtown. So do pray for that we have seven people together. Sadly, that means because we still have to do social distancing and so forth, um, we have to limit numbers. Um, but we will be attempting to live stream the service. Um, and Richard Trafui, who used to work in IT, um, who is the area dean, is going to be attempting to help us with all of that. Um, so it should be much more professional than I ever manage. No pressure, Richard. Um, everyday spirituality. There is an opportunity either on Zoom or um, at Cocked Oak um, uh, to actually just explore um, a little bit about how we just maintain our connection with God. Um, and so if you would like to um, join in the live of those, either by Zoom on, on Tuesday or at Cocked Oak, um, do email m and bookings, or if you would like me to do that on your behalf, just let me know um, and I will drop them later. There were a couple going to Cocked Oak and Groovy. Um, so you're very welcome um, to join in with that um, as we just continue to explore how we maintain our connection with God just in our everyday lives. Because God is all of us there is. And of course, if we should go even deeper, um, we have our JIF courses coming up, Journey in Faith. Um, and there will be one um, relatively near us in Broadstown, which is on Monday evenings. Um, but there are our other places. Um, as well. There is a cost to this one, but if that is prohibited to you, do talk to us if we can sort that out as well if necessary. Um, but this is a way of really getting deeper into um, the understanding of the and the walk that we make 
Um, I know quite a number of people have done it together this time and have really found it very, very useful. Um, so if you would be interested, um, do um, sign up or let me know and I can help with that as well. And we have coming up our holiday at home. Um, obviously everything is subject to um, any COVID-19 restrictions, but do contact Jen um, if you are in the older age bracket, so to be delicately, um, as we just um, bring people together um, for some um, fun times um, and enjoyment and company with one another um, in August, um, so 16th, 17th and 20th. And so anybody who's interested, do get in contact with Jen, chance to spend time together and enjoy being with one another. I invite you to stand if you are able for our final lesson. Christ, whose glory is in the heavens, fill this house and illuminate your heart. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you and all whom you love, now and always. Amen. Right, before you go, I've got one last thing that I need to do. Here we go. Because it's been such a long time since we've been able to do this, so this is fantastic. Because, I'm terribly excited, it's been such a long time. <laughs> Published the Bands of Marriage between Lee Paul Swain of this parish and Claire Louise Chalon also of this parish. This is the second time of asking if any of you know any reason in law why these persons may not marry each other, you are to declare it now. I love it when you can you couldn't even hear a pin, you can hear a pin drop. That's a good sign. We're nearly there. Um, and as we said, let's just pray for Claire uh, and um, um, as they get ready for their wedding day. Which is not that far away. So, Lord God, we pray that you will be close to the and to Claire as they prepare for their wedding day. But most importantly, we pray that you, who are loved, will be at the centre of their relationship and their married life together, that they may know your presence with them now and always. In Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm. So now you may go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.